How's it going you guys? So really quick I want to make a video about strength for combat athletes. So there's a lot of misconceptions about training strength for combat athletes and the benefits associated with it and how to approach strength and conditioning for combat athletes. A lot of people they get caught up in um, bodybuilding nonsense and um, doing high reps and stuff like that thinking for whatever reason that lifting light weights for lots and lots of reps is going to make them a better fighter. But in reality um, you're pretty much just wasting your time getting tired, getting sore, and not really creating a proper adaptation that actually translates into benefiting your performance or preventing injury as a strength, as a uh, performance athlete, as a combat athlete, as a mixed martial artist or a jiu-jitsu practitioner. It's very important to be doing proper strength and conditioning. So let me explain. First of all, the primary benefits, the primary intentions for strength training specifically for combat athletes is to create stronger joints, stronger ligaments, stronger bones, and stronger muscles, okay? Also producing strength adaptations on the nervous system to produce maximum force. When you're doing strength training, what you are doing is training your body to resist the maximum amount of force possible. And you are increasing your body's capacity to resist force, period, okay? This is key to understand, okay? When you have a 300 pound guy on top of you in full mount position in jiu-jitsu, okay? That's a lot of force your body has to resist. Imagine the amount of stress that's being put on your joints and on your bones on a regular basis. If you are a 185 pound jujitsu competitor or a middleweight MMA com competitor, okay, and you're constantly, you're, you're training with other guys even at the same body weight as you on a regular basis, okay, you're constantly making your body resist, your body needs to constantly resist opponents that are 185 pounds or more on a regular basis. When you do strength training, let's say that you you are able to bench press 315 pounds for five reps. You're training your joints, your ligaments, your muscles, your nervous system, you're training your entire body to adapt to resisting 315 pounds of force crashing down on you when you do a bench press. That does not mean like, oh, you know, I'm gonna try to bench press people off of me in jujitsu. All it means is that your elbows, your wrists, your triceps, your chest muscles, all are adapting to resist 315 pounds of force in a bench press position, which by the way, you don't necessarily bench press people when you're doing mixed martial arts or jujitsu or grappling, but you do use that movement pattern on a regular basis. Even better is doing a strict overhead press, a standing strict shoulder press, a standing strict barbell overhead press, um, for that purpose because you're literally pressing you know the maximum amount of weight straight up over your head and that trains your entire body to work in synergy to resist you know that much force and you have gravity just coming down on you so another thing is um training in the proper rep ranges okay Ideally, as a combat athlete, you want to train in the one to eight rep range with the compound movements, okay, preferably two to three times a week. And you want to be lifting anywhere from 80 to 95% of your one rep max on a regular basis. Actually, 80 to 100% of your, of your one rep max. And ideally, 85% to 100% of your one rep max on a regular basis. And for people who are not really uh, well read on exercise science and especially strength and conditioning for combat athletes, they won't understand why we're lifting so heavy for short, for a small amount, for lower amounts of reps, okay? Again, it's, you're, you're not training to lift light weights over and over again because that's not the adaptation you need. We're training for stronger joints, stronger ligaments, strong, more bone mineral density, and more power output. We're training our body's maximum amount of force that we can output and resist on a regular basis. You wanna be able to resist lots and lots of force when people are putting you in arm bars and Kimuras. 
That's exactly what grappling is about. It's about constantly resisting force every day on a regular basis over and over again, okay? And so the more that you can lift on a squat, on a deadlift, on a single leg deadlift, on a single leg squat, on, on a, a Bulgarian split, or on a split squat, a regular split squat, a lunge, all of these compound giant movements, especially single leg movements, the more force you can produce in those movements, the, you're, you're training those, um, your legs, you're training every part of your body to be able to resist as much force as possible so that when you are grappling, when you are clinching up with someone, when your back is up against the cage, you are able to resist that force when the time is necessary. This means less injuries. This means every single technique that you do, you're able to do a, with a lot less effort. It's so much easier for you to do so, okay? And make no mistake, doing body weight exercises for lots and lots of reps will not produce the same injury preventive effect as um, lifting heavy weights, okay? People who think that lifting heavy weights puts them at risk of injury don't understand the science behind it. The fact is lifting heavy weights is injury prevention for combat athletes, okay? So, yeah, not to say that body weight exercises are bad. I do them all the time, and I think that they are great as accessory movements to a comprehensive strength training program. So, um, the other thing is, in order to produce power, so power, power is dependent on your overall capacity to produce overall force. So the more overall force you can produce from your strength training program, the more power you can generate when you actually train for power. And the more power you can produce, the more speed you can produce later on. All of these energy systems are interconnected and that's where periodization comes into play. I like concurrent periodization for most of the, of the season but then when you start uh, heading towards competition, you need to start to periodize your training um, on a monthly basis until you get more and more specific as you move into competition. So next thing to get out of the way is that um, strength work is not conditioning. So again, uh, for some reason, combat athletes think that uh, they, when they train with weights, they need to train like a, they're having a cardio workout or something. And, and yeah, there is a such thing as muscular endurance, but the vast majority of muscular endurance training you're going to get from your grappling training or from training your actual sport, okay? Depending on how you train and what sport it is exactly. But for example, if you're doing wrestling or jujitsu, you are getting what, what's known as uh, lactic capacity training and lactic power training every time you step on the fucking mat. So you don't really need to go into the weight room and do like five sets of 50 deadlifts or something crazy like that, or kettlebell swings for five minutes straight. Uh, in fact, I've actually personally noticed the people who do these high rep calisthenics and that's like their main thing and then they do um, like lots and lots of reps with kettlebells are the ones who always get injured. And I think it's just because of overuse injuries. Like all of their weight training is tr they're trying to mimic their sport. So they, they're constantly working the same joints and the same range of motion over, over and over again all the time. And they create, um, they create uh, overuse in, in those joints, and ligaments, and movement patterns. And they don't train eccentrically, eccentric, the eccentric part, portion of the movement um, with strict barbell movements and things. And so they're always doing ballistic movements which creates instability in the joints. But anyway, that's... That's a lot, that's something for another video, but um, you get all the conditioning you need usually from mat work. However, um, when you are training for conditioning specifically, there are ways that you can produce, that you can produce a conditioning effect in the weight, in the, in the, uh, in your standalone workouts. So you have lactic capacity, a lactic, a lactic capacity, you have lactic power, a lactic power, and you also have aerobic capacity and aerobic power. And these are all completely different energy systems, okay? And as a combat athlete, when you're doing conditioning, you need to know what energy system am I working right now? Because if you're just doing endless circuits and calling it strength and conditioning or power training, but you don't actually know what energy system you're working, then you're going to probably end up 
what they call overtraining or overreaching, you're going to feel like garbage and you're going to perform like garbage and you're going to actually um, be harming yourself more so than helping yourself. And really, you're not going to get much of a benefit out of your strength and conditioning if you take that approach. But that's 95% of people who do strength and conditioning. So if you actually understand how to actually properly strength and condition, um, then you have a huge advantage over most people. So um, I'll quickly run over the energy systems and then you can ask me your questions down in the comments and I'll make more videos about this in the future. But first of all, aerobic capacity is basically think, and there's many different ways to do all of these. I'm just gonna give general rundowns. Aerobic capacity is like uh, steady state cardio for anywhere from 20 to 20 to 120 minutes, okay? So like a half an hour to like two hours, just uh, long running, long cycling, you know, etc. And you could do other things too, um, swimming, and, and there is a way to use circuit training in order to boost your aerobic capacity. And what you're doing is um, you're building a solid base of your body's overall foundation and capacity to utilize oxygen. So when you're at rest or when you're resting in between rounds or the totality of the rounds of your competition in the background, that aerobic system is always working. So the better your aerobic engine is, the better you can recover in between rounds and the more you can do within those rounds and the easier, the easier all that work you do in the rounds are going to be over the long term. Okay, so that's endurance essentially. Um, aerobic power is uh, how much oxygen you can utilize within the within that time frame and essentially you could think of aerobic power as like um, interval training where you do like a more you you reach almost up to the aerobic threshold for you know two to four minutes at a time followed by maybe a two to four minute rest and then keep uh, coming close to that aerobic threshold think uh, interval training on a treadmill just at a more moderate pace um, from you know 12 to 20 minutes at a time okay then after that you would have uh, lactic power wait lactic capacity so lactic capacity is how much uh, is your your body's capacity to buffer lactate and lactic acid so you know lactic acid is basically uh, you when, when you're working out you feel that burning in your muscles or whatever, and you're out of breath, huffing and puffing, and you just want it to end, it feels like hell, okay? And so, um, training that lactic capacity is training your body's overall capacity to handle lac lactic acid and lactate. So, uh, what type, how would you train the lactic capacity system is, uh, so you could do, you could do um, like two, like two to three minute um, super hardcore, like heavy bag work, for example, and just go all out for about two minutes, followed by a two minute rest, go all out for two minutes, followed by a two minute rest. Okay. Something to that, something to that extent, um, a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio. Now I might have this a little bit off right now. Forgive me. I just finished up training myself and I actually need to eat right now and hydrate and hopefully I don't cramp mid video. But, um, for the most part, I would say that's accurate. So it's a longer duration, one-to-one -one, uh, work to rest ratio to buffer lactate. Then you have lactic power. And lactic power is more so how much, uh, how much output can you produce within that lactic system. So remember, the, this, uh, this is, we're working like the glycolytic system, the gly glycolysis. So this is anywhere from 30 seconds to about maybe four minutes, uh, more like three minutes, give or take. And so lactic power, again, it's, producing more output and within that energy system. So that's gonna be more like heavy bag rounds, 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off. Um, you know, doing that for three minutes straight, followed by maybe a one minute rest and continue, something to that extent. Um, or maybe a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio, but just in 30 second intervals over and over again. Um, and you can do this with sprints and, and cycling and swimming and all sorts of things. Next thing, next thing you have a lactic capacity. So a -lact the alactic system is without, is, uh, is short bursts of energy. So think, um, think shooting for a takedown. Think, you know, picking someone up and slamming them, you know? 
So if lactic capacity and lacti the lactic system is like a scramble, it's like, it's like uh, uh, fighting for dominant position within a clinch, you know, standing, standing grappling, but at a high intensity, uh, but lots of scrambles. That's lactic power and lactic capacity. A lactic is shooting for a takedown. It's uh, actually taking someone down, um, switching positions really quick, you know, um, going for a, a blitz. And this energy system is like one to 20 seconds max. So something like that, one to 30 seconds. So you can train this system, lactic capacity, through sp uh, sprinting, 20 seconds on, you know, maybe four to five minutes off. Um, you could do, uh, what else could you do? You could do um, jump squats, you know, maybe as many jump squats as possible within 20 seconds, followed by a four to five minute rest, stuff like that. Then you have alactic power. So alactic power is, um, tr again, training is uh, how, much out how much you can output within that energy system. So that's going to be, um, that's going to be like um, power cleans, doing power cleans, power snatches for one to three sets, one to, or yeah, one to three reps, one to three reps, okay, at a time, resting four to five minutes in between sets. You're training your body's overall capacity to produce the most explosive power um, within a sh the shortest amount of time. Uh, plyometrics are good. Um, and uh, sprint sprints again, you can do that, but to a smaller degree or speed and, and reactivity drills, but more so plyometrics, medicine ball throws, um, and uh, Olympic lifts, generally speaking, are gonna be what you wanna do to train that system because you're training your body's um, maximum force within the shortest amount of time, essentially. Maximum velocity, velocity training there. So. That's just a quick rundown, basic overview. There's a whole lot more to discuss in between those, but um, if you have any questions or comments, post them down below. Um, then remember, telling a combat athlete not to use strength is like telling a basketball player not to use height, okay? If you train strength and conditioning properly, every single technique that you do, no matter how good you are with your skill, it's gonna be that much better. You will have a significant advantage. If you're already amazing and world-class with your skill, you will be even, you will be, your game will be like, like impenetrable, like bulletproof, if you start to answer uh, the conditioning. It's literally like taking your techniques and putting them on steroids. And then resisting, resisting other people's techniques too. If your defense is already good and you can already get like Kimura's pr pretty well, your, your uh, ability to get out of Kimura's is gonna be way better if you can, dumbbell uh, shoulder press, you know, 100 pound dumbbells, like seriously. And you're not gonna put on extra mass either and get big and bulky. Strength training is not the same thing as muscle building. Keep that in mind. People think that you have to build muscle to get stronger, that's not true. It really isn't. Um, and one more thing is, when you are resisting joint locks and things, if you have really strong joints and you do strength training properly, like I'm talking about, uh, your, your risk of injury is gonna be much lower if you've trained your body to resist maximum force, okay? If your max force production increases, your, res your, your ability to resist um, uh, force increases, your, your joints, your ligaments, your whole entire body becomes more resilient to resisting that force. So, yeah. Uh, but people don't wanna hear it, I don't know why. People are really like, they, they, they just shut, shut it out whenever I try to tell them that, so whatever.